A new year gives us a new beginning and a new hope for tomorrow. These were the words of Governor General Mary Simon in her New Year's address to us as Canadian people. She went on to say that as a Canadian people, we are on a path to reconciliation, on a lifelong journey of healing, respect, and understanding. Church family, I want to pour into that a little bit deeper with you and I in 2022. As we enter into yet more unknown, a season of continued questions, chaos, unrest, worry, panic, and even fear. As you and I now enter 2022, may we do so in faith, in confidence, not in fear. We're going to share three songs together today that our music team has put together for us. But before we do that, I want to unpack for us how we're going to approach them as you listen to them and even uh, feel free to sing along uh, from home today. Let me begin with these words from one of those songs where it says, I know the night won't last, your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Friends, may that be our hope in 2022. May we know that Jesus is still enough. I want to reference again author, speaker, Bishop N.T. Wright, as I did on Christmas Eve from his book, Simply Jesus. In the preface, he brings out what I believe is a very good observation when it comes to understanding who Jesus is. And I would confess, uh, as a pastor, as a preacher at times, I'm guilty of one trying to summarize, maybe even trying to tweet in 140 characters or less, or summarize in one sentence who Jesus is. Not that there aren't times for that to make a bold statement and a bold declaration, but what N.T. Wright challenges us in this preface is he reminds us that we must be careful not to oversimplify Jesus and his message. Friends, this is my promise to you as your pastor in 2022. I don't want us to oversimplify who Jesus is in our lives, both individually and corporately as a church body. My promise to you is that we are going to walk together to learn more about who Jesus is and the message, yes, that he had for the first century Jewish people who were his audience, but how that message has transcended over the last 2,000 years and how it still applies in 21st century context for you and I. Because not unlike the first century Jew who were walking a time of political unrest and concern and chaos. Sound familiar? With all the questions we have in the air right now, who's going to lead us? How is this going to move forward? And may I pause right there and say this, friends. Let us continue to pray for those in leadership. Whether that be our premier, whether that be Dr. Russell, our chief medical officer, whether that be the Minister of Health, Dorothy Shepherd, and there are many others in critical leadership roles who at this time of crisis, like you and I, are truly feeling the pinch, the tiredness. Our Premier echoed those very words in his address this past Friday. Friends, how can you and I best respond? We can bless, not blame. We can bless. And we can and we will pray. And that's how I want us to begin this time now. I want to read for you as a prayer the words of the first song that we're going to sing together. Would you pray with me? We seek your kingdom first. We hunger 
and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives, for you are our joy and prize. To see the captive hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor, at peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church. We pray, revive this earth. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray, unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power. Your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize. To see the captives' hearts release, the hurt, the sick. Build your kingdom. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. With this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom. What are we asking God to do in 2022? How were we surprised by God in 2021? If I could speak on behalf of our local church, I would say we were surprised by God, by the, the grateful hearts of families who came uh, into this church facility and found it a safe place for their youth, for their children for seniors who came to exercise, for people who came to give blood in support of their community. I would also say we were surprised by the generosity of the community for the second year in a row when it comes to the Toyland project that we were so honored and privileged to partner with, Greener Village. It was a place where children and youth could be with others. And as you and I walk around 
the walls of the chaos that's going on and we think, isn't it time for this all to fall down? Where, where are we going from here? But Jesus has never failed me yet. Can you say amen to that today? Yes, I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. Let those words sink in as the music team leads us in this next song.
If I could continue with some questions today, um, and you know me well, you know that's that's how I I operate, how I move at times to put the questions out there, just to get us thinking and sharing together. What mountains do we need the church to see moved in 2022? As you think about that song we just sang together, what mountains do you and I need moved in our own lives? Yes, in 2022, friends, let's, as Jesus illustrates, have the faith of a mustard seed. May our fears not take center stage, but may our faith, even when it seems oh so small, may our faith be strong, be bold enough to let God move mountains. The music team's going to lead us in one more song. And in there, the words uh, that are expressed, they say, shake up the ground of all my tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way, that is Jesus' way, is better. Now think about that for a moment, friends. Since March of 2020, Shake up the ground of all my tradition. You think about even how you and I are gathering right now. Yes, I long to be present with you physically, sharing, uh, giving glory to God, singing, talking, conversing, praying together in person. But as we think about how all that's been shaken, those traditions that you and I have held for generations how this global pandemic has shaken that, how it's breaking down the walls of the religion that, that you and I know. Could it be, friends, that through this season, no matter how long, could it be that through this season, we will discover again that the way of Jesus is better and as we will look at following this song together, as we will look at the wilderness experience of Jesus before he took to three incredible years of shaping the lives of people that he would walk with, as they would discover his way is better. Could it be that as you and I walk this wilderness, we discover Jesus again?
Friends, before I, I read from, from Matthew chapter 4, and I trust maybe you've had a chance to read through that story uh, already this week, but before I go there, I want to come back to the promise that I shared at the beginning of my remarks today. When I said that in 2022, my promise to you is that we together will discover more of who Jesus is. And how are we going to do this? Well, very simply, friends, we're going to study. We're going to study the life of Jesus, beginning with the writings of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In fact, friends, 
we're going to spend all of 2022 focusing on those four Gospels. Yes, the good news of Jesus, because I don't know about you, but as we come into 2022, I could use an entire year of good news. And friends, that is exactly what we are going to do. So in the coming days and weeks, we're going to be sharing with you some resources. We're going to break down with you uh, some daily, weekly readings that you can do around uh, your kitchen table with your youth, with your kids, with your grandparents. And there's a part of my challenge to you and I today. As we sit at that dinner table, I don't want us to be so caught up and concerned about the meal, the food that we're trying to consume to get ready for the next activity. Here's a part of my challenge to you and I, friends, in 2022. May the conversation be what drives the meal. The words that are shared. First of all, acknowledging Jesus at the center of our tables. Now, how are we going to begin all this? You know, I've been asked at times, you know, Chris, what are, what are some practical spiritual steps that I can take to walk with Jesus, to walk alongside him, to get to know him? How do I practically practice? Yes, I. how do I practically practice my faith, walk my spiritual journey? Friends, I want to give you one simple step for all of 22. Breathe. You've heard me say it a few times this past year. You've heard me use it uh, in illustrations when I've been sharing, and I've even challenged you time. Take a deep breath, but I want to push that a little further now into 2022. Here's what I want to challenge you to do. When you breathe, be aware of the breath that you take. Where is that very breath coming from? Then listen. Listen to the voice of Jesus, to his spirit speaking into your life. Then listen to the voices around you in your circle, whether it's that steady 10 or even larger. Listen to those voices. Be aware of that breath that is happening, given to you by God. Then speak. Speak life. Speak a blessing, not blame, into those around you. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. A wilderness experience. Wandering. In the translation that I read today, it says Jesus was famished. He was hungry. He felt isolated, alone. Can you echo those thoughts today in 2022? Why do I begin with this wilderness experience of Jesus for us? in a new year. 
because, friends, it is out of this wilderness experience. As Jesus had just been baptized, he would go into the world and change it forever. Through his love, his compassion, his acts of healing, kindness, mercy, his love on display, he would change the world forever. But prior to that happening, we see this wilderness experience where he gets away, endeavoring to come closer to his Father. And so it is with you and I in 2022, in this wilderness, in this wandering, in this isolation, in this sense of being alone. May it be our faith, not our fear, as we discover Jesus here that leads us on. There are just a couple of key things I want to I wanna pull from this story. And that is, when Jesus says, I don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. How do you and I address our spiritual well-being. An observation, friends, that I've made over the last year and a bit as we've been watching the world around us, we've heard a lot of talk and conversation about physical health, mental health, and those are important, and we need to address those. But friends, I am concerned about perhaps the lack of conversation around our spiritual health our soul care. And I confess to you today that in 2021, maybe I didn't do as good of a job as I should have. And that's why I make that promise to you today that for this year, we will spend time looking at the good news of Jesus. When Jesus says, don't put the Lord your God to the test, he knew his foundation. He knew where his faith was found. It wasn't out of the fear of being hungry, out of the fear of not knowing what his ministry was going to look like or unfold, the people that he may or may not interact with over the next three years. No, his foundation was in God and in God alone. And when we talk about our spiritual well-being, friends, perhaps one of the first places we could start is through prayer. And when you and I say to someone, oh, I'm praying for you, is that just some phrase, just some remark that we just kind of pass off and say, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you. I'll say a simple prayer. Or are we really leaning into that? What is it that we are really saying? Because when we look at Jesus' response here, to evil itself. When Jesus says, I do not live on bread alone, but by the very word of God. Friends, what that challenge comes to you and I is that even though we walk a time when we may not have an answer for a neighbor or a friend through a crisis that they are facing, when we say we are praying for them, we can do so in confidence, knowing that as we are present with and for them, there's opportunity for you and I to draw closer to heaven itself. And friends, that's what I believe the opportunity of 2022 is. We have an opportunity in 2022 to be closer to heaven than we've ever been before. Because when we say, God, build your kingdom here, do we mean it? God, bring your kingdom, bring your presence here and now. Just as Jesus lived amongst the Jewish people in that first century, so he too does today through his Holy Spirit with you and I in 2022. Let us not forget that, friends, but let us remember that. I can't help but think, and I know I referenced on Christmas Eve that I'd watched 
National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. There's another scene in that movie towards the end of the film, and Clark was a was a dad who wanted to to give this just all out family, good old fashioned fun family Christmas for for his family, for his in laws. Bring them all together so that they could share in the wonder of Christmas. And everything seemed to be going wrong. And finally, maybe in better judgment, his wife Ellen just says, you know, Clark, it's over. We need to, we need to get everybody packed up and, and, and moving them on their way before things get worse. And Clark looks at Ellen and he says, worse? Take a look around you, Ellen. How could they get any worse? We are at the threshold of hell. If I could dig a little bit deeper into Clark's words there, think about that for a moment, friends. Because there's probably been a time or two, and I confess I would be amongst you in this thought, that in 2021, we have been at the threshold of hell. Literally walking a very dark, dark road. And thinking, how can they get any worse? How can, and here we are entering 2022, and guess what? It looks like, it appears like it's getting worse. But friends, then I'm reminded of the words of the songs we have sang today, that Jesus is still enough. Great is your faithfulness. Your promise still stands. And in the midst of the unknown, he is still known. Will you and I seek him in 2022 as we unpack the good news laid out in these gospels? Because you see, when you look at this story of Jesus' wilderness experience in Matthew 4, that is what Jesus does. He tells evil face to face, I will not bend, I will not bow, because I know who my Father is. That is the confidence that you and I can have going into 2022. Friends, there's a phrase I have often closed our times together with. It's very simply, go with God, friends. If I may, I think it's a little bit incomplete. I want to finish it. And I want to share it with you today as a statement that you and I are going to share together every Sunday. And I want to challenge you in your homes to use it every single day. Here it is. I am going with God. Why? God is already where I am going. Say that with me. I am going with God. God is already where I am going. As we face 2022, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you how it's going to unfold, what it's going to look like six months from now. But here's what I know, friends. God is already there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is our confidence. This is our faith. I'm going with God, friends. God is already where I am going.